Desmond, it seems um, yeah, someone has started the recording. Okay. Um, just let me if you can be able to see my screen. Um, can you? Okay. So I think my screen is visible. So um, Streamlit is um, um, a faster way in which we can build and then we can share our data apps. Um, it is web-based. So that means that you um, can be able to um, visualize your apps in a web-based platform. And Streamlit is also like um, 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 a platform where you are able to uh, actually uh, be able to visualize your um, your your visualizations better. So um, I will just check us through um, how we can be. Um, I think if you can see from my screen, you can be able to know um, how um, or the the working of um, the Streamlit. So you can just head over to streamlit.io. That is the official website. And in the official website, you can be able to read through and know how to um, install Streamlit. So with that, if you want to install um, Streamlit in your machine, you will just use the command pip install Streamlit. Um, and then you hit the enter and then the Streamlit will be able to be installed in, in your in your machine. Then after that, you can just run Streamlit hello so that you can be able to see that Streamlit is running in, in your machine. So um, I think it is that simple um, to install your, your machine. So I just want to take us through um, uh, um, a live session so that you are able to see how Streamlit actually works. So um, let me just share again so that uh, I could show you how Streamlit actually works. Um, so tell me if you're able to see my my screen again, the, the Visual Studio. Um, someone can just alert me and tell me you are able to see my screen. Yeah. Yes, we can see it. So um, here you um, from from uh, I've already installed Streamlit in my machine, so uh, there's no need of me installing it again. But you can just be able to use the code that I showed you so that you um, are able to uh, actually install Streamlit. So with that, um, if you have written your codes and you would love to run them in, um, in Streamlit, um, for example, this one, I have written a, a code here that is um, trying to um, get some data and then to visualize that data. So um, uh, if, you, if you want to um, run your app, you will just use the command um, Streamlit, Streamlit um, run, and then the name of um, the file that you want to run. That is, um, to my case, it is EDA basketball. .py. So um, when we run this one, we will be able to um, see the visualizations of um, um, of um, this file that we have been able to um, to code here. So just give it a few minutes so that it can start and then we are able to see.
So, um, so I'll give it a few minutes. Yeah, so uh, we are able to specify from um, um, the file that we ran how um, I'll just go, I'll, I'll take you a little bit through the code so that you're able to understand whatever is happening here. Um, so um, um, in my code here, we were able to ins um, to import the Streamlit Pandas, the 64 Matplotlib um, for visualization, Seaborn and NumPy. So um, here we are just writing the title, um, that is Streamlit the title, to write the title of um, um, the, the, the web-based app that we are running here. Let me just show you. This is the the title of um, uh, that this web-based uh, app that we are running, um, and then uh, with this markdown, we are able to also um, uh, we, we we are able to write something, uh, not necessarily the code, but it's just like um, the markdown for. Uh, whatever I want to or describe in um, in our app. So it's just this, um, this is the output of uh, the markdown that we uh, have presented. Um, and then um, the sidebar, uh, this is the head of the sidebar. So streamlit that, that sidebar, it gives us the um, the sidebar of, uh, of this, the web-based app, I'll just show us the sidebar so that you are able to see. So this is the sidebar uh, and you're able to see it. So it's kind of a division um, that has been created from the main um, part this side. So with um, um, the code line uh, st.sidebar, we are able to actually get this sidebar. Um, and dot head gives us the, uh, uh, the head for this um, sidebar that we have. Um, so um, this one here, it's only meant to uh, actually to get the data that we are working with. Um, uh, the side section of this one, we can also see the positions, the unique positions. Um, and then we also have the filtering. Uh, just show us those in a, a few. Um, yeah, um, you can be able to see these um, side sections, the positions, the teams that you want to work with. Um, and we can also be able to uh, just choose uh, whatever teams that we want to work with. So at first it selects all. Um, we can select the, the number of teams that you want to work with here. And it is, we, we are able to select them from um, this side position here. Um, um, then after that, we can also be able to produce the heat map and we are able to use uh, um, the, the codes that we actually, the libraries that we imported up here, uh, that is the matplotlib and the seaborn so that we are able to actually produce a heat map for um, the visualization that we were doing for this um, code. So, um, let's see if it will run this one so that you're able to see the heat map being produced. A minute. Oh yeah, so we can be able to see down here. It's able to produce for us um, um, a nice heat map for um, the data that we were working with. So with that, um, we are able to see that. Um, um, how how Streamlit works 
the basics of streamlit that is um, and with the basics of streamlit i know that we can be able to explore further with it and um, yeah at, the, at this stage i want to because i i, I believe docker is more um, voluminous as compared to uh, compared to streamlit i think streamlit is a little bit simpler that's why i have taken a very short time to um, try and explain to us how basics of how streamlit works so maybe we can get a few questions and then i welcome musa who is going to take us through um, Musa is going to take us through um, Docker. So maybe if someone could be having a question, um, you could just unmute and then you could raise your hand and then um, you can answer concerning uh, what you've covered in Streamlit. Do we have anyone with a question concerning Streamlit? Yes, Rafa. I'm not very sure if I can hear you clearly, Rafa. Maybe you can um, uh, be closer to your mic. Okay. Uh, can you hear me well now? It's a little bit better. Okay. So I was saying that if you can just re return back to the uh, to the code, so I can see the command for the how to use uh, a stream like the, the command of how to. Yeah, I mean, after we, we install it, yes. how we can uh, implement the data there so we can visualize it and see it. Uh, you're asking how you can visualize the data? Yes. OK. Um, so, uh, uh, you can see from here I can um, I have written a function of how you can of how to load this data that we have um, and after that um, uh, I am trying to work on the positions uh, the side positions that the team selection of the data this one um, position selections um, then the filtering data um, we have this one here um, and then from there um, from there i create a heat map for um, this data using um, this particular code uh, so yeah I'm, I'm just asking i mean this this uh... This code, like it exists somewhere, or we should think about it. Or... I, I could send it to you so that you are able to follow through. I see. Okay, thank you. Uh, can you briefly repeat the installation steps for Streamlit? Okay. So if you want to install Streamlit, uh, it is very simple in, in, in installation of Streamlit. You just use the command pip install Streamlit. Um, as you can see from the official website, that is a streamlit.io. You just run the command pip install Streamlit. And after that, you are able to run also Streamlit hello so that you can be able to see that streamlit is running in um, your your machine it's a good way of knowing that streamlit is installed it's that simple pip install streamlit and then you just run um, streamlit hello only that 
Okay, from any any directory. Yes, you can run from any directory. Yeah, thanks. But maybe I would prefer that if from um, your CMD you can run it and then you're able to use it. And we have Amal. Hi. Yes. Okay, so I was asking if uh, you can make uh, a dashboard interactive using Streamlit. Yes, you can make the dashboard interactive as um, you can see here. We are able to interact with uh, with our dashboard. You see, if I remove um, certain uh, teams, team selections from my, uh, my dashboard here, um, and then uh, we can see um, it, it runs again. We can be able to interact with it and choose whatever we want in whatever position that you want. Does that answer your question? Okay. okay. Yes, um, yes, they can also. Okay. And uh, can you view the raw data? Of viewing the raw data? Yes. This one here? Yes, how, how did you... How did I? How did you display it there? Is there is there a code, a specific code that you write? Um, the, um, there's this code here. I'm able to uh, actually um, um, I'm able to actually. Um, See my 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 data using using this um, using this um, you see my my function um, my function load data. So after loading my data, I'm able to return um, my data so that I am able to actually view the um the, the the statistics data that I have. So with this code here I'm able to view my 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 data. Here. All right. Okay, thank you. Um we have Fidel. Yeah can you hear me? Yes I can hear you. Yeah okay thank you Desmond. Uh I have a question. Is there yes. any particular setup to do after installing the Streamlit? No, there's no particular setup to, to do. It's only pip install. It's only pip install um, Streamlit. Um, yeah. That one alone. Yeah, after, because I try with, I install it and I put Streamlit Hello and it's asking the email address something. Uh, Please, can, sure. you, can you share the link of the website in the chat? Okay. Okay, thank you. We have shared the, the link. Mm -hmm in the chat so we can have a look at that so do you have anyone else before we welcome musa okay so if we if we have further questions i believe we can still ask in slack so that um, we can have this time also musa to take us through um Okay. So welcome, Musa. Uh, thanks, Desmond. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, Musa here. So I'm going to share my screen now. 
Uh, so I guess, yeah, I hope everyone knows it's been quite a hectic week. Um, so I do not have a proper demo. Um, we are going to revise uh, and learn together. So um, what I've done is I've just uh, resurfaced some of my old code that I, that I built uh, when I was doing my master's research. Uh, it's a bit outdated, um, but <clears throat> uh, let's see what we can do with it. But uh, as a start, we need to discuss uh, uh, these images. Did I have these images open? Okay, that's fine. Uh, okay. Can you can you see the image? Yeah, you go. See the image that I'm displaying. But maybe let's go first uh, before going into it. Um, let's get our bearings right. Okay. So this is day five, right? Um, and uh, this one is just taking you through. This is the afternoon session. This one is just taking you through uh, how to uh, work with Streamlit uh, to to deploy your your dashboards, right? Uh, for your machine learning models. So for me, uh, for my job is really to explain to you how you could. So everything that we've built, um, you know, if you want to deploy that, then you could use Docker, right? You could, I mean, you could deploy locally on your machine, uh, but you know, it means that you have to keep your your machine uh, on all the time, uh, or even if you deploy on a server. Uh, or you could, yeah, so if you want to deploy on the server, uh, the best way to do that uh, to, uh, I'd say, optimize resources, right? So Docker would allow you to be able to deploy uh, many applications uh, on the on the same system. Uh, so that's what we're looking at. So let's say, you know, I mean, we've gone through quite a few examples, uh, but I mean, all of them, you know, uh, revolving around uh, you know, the Twitter streams, uh, tweets and, and, and stuff like that. But if you want to be able to deploy multiple different applications on the same server, uh, or even on the cloud, um, you know, Google, uh, AWS, even Microsoft, they're using Docker to host your applications um, on the cloud. So that's, that's where Docker comes in uh, for deployment on the cloud. But even during, you know, building, when you're developing, you know, it's easier to share your code with someone else with the with the installations with the artifacts instead of just you know having to you know start from the scratch installing something if you share a docker uh, image then someone else can just run with the same setup as that you have right so that's the that's that's the value of docker in this whole process um so let's say uh, previously how did they used to do it um okay so here um guys uh, this is more for if you have Questions? Don't uh, you can you can you can interrupt me and ask. Um, but okay. In the meantime, um, I wanted to say that you know previously they used to use uh, what we call virtual machines. Um, uh, many of us have used virtual machines. Uh, there is you know different uh, providers, but I think one of the biggest ones was uh, that still exists now. It's called VMware, right? So there are these things called virtual machines where in you are running like I'm. I'm using an Ubuntu machine, right? And I want to run an application uh, on on Windows environment, and I don't have a Windows machine. So the, we used we used to use these uh, virtual machines, uh, but those virtual machines are heavy uh, in terms of how much space they take, and also in terms of you know your, your RAM utilization, right? Because in the virtual machine, I have to install a whole operating system. If I have three virtual machines. You know, let's say uh, Windows, uh, Red Hat, and uh, let's say CentOS here. Like they all take up so much space, right? So it's it's very difficult. Like it would make your your machine very slow, right? Uh, what containers do is that they abstract the operating system level, right? So you have one operating system 
And then you have this thing called the Docker engine, which is really a, a Linux concept, right? Wherein you're able to share the operating system resources among different uh, so-called containers or container images, right? Uh, container is when you know, it's running or an image when, when it's no longer running, right? So that's the whole point of, of containers. You're able to be able to run multiple different containers locally without taking too much uh, you know, space, but also without having to install another operating system, right, on top of, of a virtual machine. So that's where we are now. Um, and yeah, okay, so let's get into it. So, okay, so there is, maybe before we even go into the code, there is, um, I'm sure someone is gonna ask me also, what is Kubernetes, uh, what about Kubernetes? So Kubernetes actually is like the next level um, of, of this evolution, right? So like I'm saying that we have different containers. So in the microservices world, uh, if you want to, you know, make sure that, because now the way they build um, a, a, a software is that you have a, a, a database running on one uh, container, you have a web server running on another container, uh, and then maybe you have something else. So you have like multiple different services which together come, uh, which come together uh, to, to, to run a whole uh, complete application, right? So, so that's, that's the next level where in, you know, um, uh, Kubernetes comes in, but even, even Docker, right? I'm gonna use a different image. Even Docker has what Kubernetes does, which is called Docker Swarm, right? So basically what you have is that you have deployed your container in some node, a node is just a, uh, another name for a computer could be could be a physical computer it could be a logical computer right uh and so these are different nodes where you're running different applications and in order to make sure that they communicate with each other maybe you are, you are running a a high performance computing environment then your orchestra is like an orchestrator right it's the one that controls uh what happens here you know maybe you have you are doing a uh, redundancies uh, and you need to Make sure that when one node fails, then you can you know move the computation to another uh, node, etc. So Docker Swarm or Kubernetes, um, that's what they do. But we're not going to be talking about uh, Kubernetes today. We just want to talk about uh, Docker. But this is the like the next level uh, where where uh, many uh, software development practices are. Cool. Uh, so now uh, with Docker, there are two uh, main important concepts. Right, uh, there's the concept of a Docker file, right? So it's like a simple uh, Docker file that I wrote. But a Docker file is more like um, if you, if you remember what we did uh, it was yesterday, day before yesterday, with um, with uh, GitHub Actions. Um, we okay. So let's see, there's a question here. Uh, at this point, if you are, or anyone else, if you are able to answer some of the questions um, on the chat that I'm not able to see when I'm talking. Uh, so yeah, a node is like, so if you have, if you have two com computers, you could say you have, you have two nodes, right? It's just another way for a, a computer. It could be, it could be a master, it could be a slave, you know, it could be code, whatever it is. So it's just another way for, for a computer. Uh, but like I'm saying, you know, maybe it's not a physical computer. Maybe it's, it's you know, um, maybe what you've done on, on the same machine is you've, uh, you've separate, you've, you've, you have multiple computers. Like you have, like with, with, um, with Docker, right? If you are able to run multiple computers or multiple, uh, yeah, say multiple, uh, multiple containers, but they could even like even have different operating systems operating systems that are running, right? Linux based operating systems. So you could say, you know, one container is one node, right? Because it, it, it acts sort of independently from the other. But what you can do with what's happening in a different node is, you know, they could communicate, they could share data, they could, you know, whatever, right? They could share computation, right? In terms of uh, you're running an HPC, Xmas computing application, and you want to send uh, some part of the computation to one uh, part of one node and you know etc. So a node is just you know a, a generic term for uh, a, a another computer, 
Um, but it doesn't have to be. Could, could be, could be any type of device, right? That could be a node. Okay. Cool. So, so I've explained this. So I wanted to say that uh, with Docker, there are two main concepts, right? There's a, the concept of a Docker file, and then uh, beyond a Docker file, what you also have is, you know, it's a sort of a, a Docker Compose file, right? Uh, but so before we get to this, I think because um, I was trying to run it yet, it's an old. Okay, let me just see the images. Okay, so some something might have failed here. Okay, but that's fine. Um, this is just you know. So what I wanted to do is before going to the, the Docker Compose file and explaining what happens with the Docker file, um, I wanted us to look at a few uh, Docker commands, right? To say you know what can you do with Docker, right? Uh, so I think that would be a great place to start, and then we can we can go to some more advanced uh, concepts. Uh, so like I was saying, what I've done is I didn't create a new uh, tutorial, but I have some old uh, Docker code uh, that I keep. So just you know, go through uh, some of the best scripts that I've written um, for most of the commands that I really um, tend to repeat. Right? So we just uh, I do know some some of these files are. Uh, okay, so I think the okay the most important ones that we can start with is uh, okay okay this is a, a much more complicated way of of installing Docker that I'm going to show you now. So what you can do in in Ubuntu basically I think uh, let's just do this sudo. I think it's up cache search Docker, right? Um, okay. Let's see. My, oh, there's a lot of things. Okay, that's fine. But I think now this is what you could do. You just do sudo uh, something uh, up or snap. Install Docker. It's as simple as that. Because um, I think they're not longer using apps, they're using here, you see. So it can go get Docker and then install it. So that's one part of Docker that you have to use. If you're running on a different machine, uh, you know, on the Docker site, it will show you um, how to actually do your installations um, for, for your machine. Uh, because I know, because um, like I was saying, uh, uh, Windows doesn't have the, the concept of uh, the, the the core concept that makes Docker, uh, Docker possible, which is what uh, things called Linux containers, right? So they, there's a way that they, they use to, uh, to be able to run uh, these Docker images uh, in Windows. So you'll see that it may be a little bit different than these things like Docker uh, desktop, server, etc. Uh, but with Ubuntu, it's really, really simple. So I'm going to stop this because I already have Docker installed. Uh, and then the other thing would be to install Docker Compose. We'll get to Docker Compose uh, in a second. But anyway, um, so, um, yeah, so one of the most important things to see here, yeah, just open another one, um, is to say if, you do, if I do Docker images, right? Okay. I think it's because this is. I'm just going to kill this, this tab. It's fine. If I do buffer images, do sudo. Do sudo. I have many things open here, so I'm just going to close some of these things. Shouldn't take this long to run. Uh, let's just see what happens there. Okay, let me just check here if there's any questions. Okay. 
guys if i'm moving too fast uh please stop me um i think i want this to be more interactive uh, i know we're all tired <laughs> so if it can be as interactive as possible uh, that would be great um okay let's start sorry. oh okay there we are okay i don't know i, I think it's because i something okay so okay maybe while we're getting this this error um, the issue here is that I'll show you. So there's this thing that I've actually done here, where you are you are able because because Docker and it's really doing stuff on the on the operating system level, right? So you can actually you know break a lot of things, but you you know so normally for most of the things you have to use sudo, which means that you are running as as an admin. But if you if you do these things here. Uh, if you you know run these commands, basically you're saying that you know uh, add Docker to, as as one of the privileged users. Uh, so I think this tab didn't update. Okay, so let's see if now this can work without using sudo. So the images. Okay, so now it works, right? Um, so I have a bunch of uh, images here, right? And here, I mean, they will show you you know the tag. Um, so, so this is the repository would be like the name of of your image, right? Uh, so here, normally this is the the formats that we use, right? So this would be the username, and then the first part before the slash would be the username, and then the other part would be you know what the name of that image is, right? And then the tag would be you know whatever it is. Normally, you know it's latest, but for example, uh, with something like Ubuntu where you have a bunch of Ubuntu uh, versions, right? there's 20, there's 18, there's 16, then, you know, the tag would be different, would be the, according to the version of that, right? Uh, so, and then the image ID, so, you know, this has to, of course, so that, you know, all these things are, are unique, you can actually interact with this image via the image ID, uh, when the image was first created, you know, uh, some of these are really, really old, and then the size, because you'll see that because this contains a, this is one that I've built using Docker Compose. So it's an image based on, you know, a combination of many other uh, images, right? Which are separate. Uh, but then, you know, it, it, if, if you want to deploy them together, then you can sort of put them together using Docker Compose. That's what Docker Compose does. Well, in all the this different sizes. Um, so, yeah, so, yeah. Okay, so I think, okay, so that's, that's one of the instructions that you can run to see what Docker images have been built on your environment, right? But I think you can also do Docker PS, right? Docker PS is like, I think in, 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 in Linux, you can just do PS, right? Which shows you, you know, what, what is running on your machine, right? So Docker is a PS version, which is Docker PS, which says which containers are running, right? You see here, these are just images, nothing is running, right? It shows us when they were created, but if you do Docker PS, then it shows you which containers are running, right? So one of the things we could do, so you see there's nothing, but I think we could do Docker run, I think it's Hello World, okay? Let's see what happens there, right? So we're saying now we want to start up this, uh, you know this 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 image called hello world so if you see here right so this hello world is, it comes from from docker so it's i've already pulled it right so let's see if it will find it and run it for me okay uh, it's a bit slow for some reason because the hello world um uh, could, uh, image should be very fast um Okay, so while it runs, what we can do, we can try to see Docker, hello world, Docker file. Okay, wanna see how it's been built. Okay, I hope I hope we can see it. I hope they have it somewhere. Okay, let's let it run. Okay, let's see. Do they have the Okay, so this is this what we've just run now, right? But for some reason, it's taking a while. Uh, and then you'll see 
when it's done, then uh, you, well, this is, um, okay, this is, okay. So first here, it was pulling, and then here, it's it's already been pulled. Uh, okay, let's try something else. I don't know why it's taking so long, because it's already been pulled. Okay, <clears throat> yeah. So they, they, someone has a, I don't think this is the actual, um, but anyway, so I'll show you here uh, in my source, so Alpine, right? So let's say you want to run, so Ubuntu, Ubuntu is large. I mean, here, if you look at the sizes of my images, right? Uh, this one is based on Ubuntu, right? It's one on top, but okay, Ubuntu alone is about 77, right, uh, megabytes, but if you run Alpine, right? So just, so, okay. So maybe I'll explain in Docker file one way I did, right? So a Docker file, ooh, this is the wrong one. Uh, okay, so this should be Alpine, not Ubuntu. Okay, <clears throat> anyway, so, so it's Alpine Linux is like a, a miniaturized uh, version of, of Ubuntu. So let's see where we are. Yeah. If we go to, I think it's this folder, it's the first one. Fine. Okay. So you've, okay. I've, okay, I haven't shown you how to do it with uh, Docker Compose, but if you can do it with Docker, to do it, to build an image, so you do Docker build, uh, I think you see here, right? Let's see. So it's searching. First, it will search if the image already exists, and if it doesn't, it will try to build it. So, so it it looks for in that directory where you are. It looks for a Docker file which you already have here in this directory. I need a better computer, guys. <laughs> Yeah, so working with uh, kernels and, and containers that with a slow computer doesn't, it's not fun. Okay, let's see. Uh, then finish, Docker run, hello, let's try that again. Okay, it won't because this is running, okay. But you see what's going on now, right? <clears throat> I've run Docker build here, right? And then it looks for Docker file. So this is what it's doing, right? It's saying, you know, step one of four, because, right, I only have four lines of code here. So first it says, okay, from Alpine Latex, right? What is Alpine? Where, where does it find it? Right? It will look for it if I have it locally, but if I don't, it will come here. It will come to what's called Docker Hub, which I haven't explained yet, right? But Docker Hub is like a, you could think of it like a GitHub for Docker images, right? So here, if I look for Alpine, I should be able to find it, okay? So, so I'm, I guess to say you, you need an internet connection uh, to pull these images from, from Docker Hub, right? So this is the image that it's going to come for, right? Uh, and then the text, as I was explaining to you, so... Um, Okay, so these are the so this is the tag. This is what it's going to do. This is the image that it's going to put, right? From 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 this website from Docker. So that's what it's doing here. That's what it's, the pool is complete, right? It's pulled it, uh, but so here defining it like this is one way of doing it. But another way of doing it is you could we could run this command, right? So what's happening here? Uh, what happened here based on this based on this line here? is the same as if I ran this command. If I copy this command, paste it on my terminal, run it, that it will go and pull uh, Alpine, uh, Alpine Linux, and the latest version. But I can specify any other version. You see, I can specify this this version or this version, whichever one I want, right? Um, yeah, depending on, you know, uh, whatever my system needs. Okay, so we'll pull, so it will complete, right? So normally when I, I put an image, I like to just do an update, 
etc. So that everything is, is up to date. Uh, okay, cool. So that's a simple, that's a very simple, um, you know, image. And you could, you know, you could want to maintain it yourself. But if you want to maintain it yourself, uh, you have a maintainer and then maybe you save it in a, in a different way. So this, you can, you know, save it in a different way if you want. Uh, like I've done here with these ones, okay? Uh, okay, so let's see. The images. Oh, because this is not done, so we won't be able to run uh, something. Else. Let's hope it doesn't take too long. Uh, but I think to, yeah, okay, we'll still have it here, right? So you see, you can build it, and then when you build it, then you give it a name, right? So in addition to what I've done here, I say Docker build here dot. I could have said a uh, space. Um, could have sent so that you can see Docker build here space minus t, and then say Alpine ten uh, x. So this is you know our ten x Alpine version that we want to to do, right? Or actually this way, because let's say ten x is our is our user. And then, yeah, it could be soon, even be latest. So when I do a, a push, right, I'll, we'll see if we can push. If I do a push to Docker Hub, it will, it will come here and uh, it's one of my images. Uh, and it will, it will just be something like this, right? It will look like this because this is how I've labeled it. So this is my, my user and this is the image uh, that, that I'm storing, uh, yeah which I'm going to use as, so this is how I put it, right? Cool. Um, so that's, that's you know, okay. So uh, let me see if I can show you, uh, let's go through some other uh, commands for Docker before I show you how to use Docker Compose. Uh, so, okay, this is a bash file. Uh, okay, let's see how to install Docker in different, okay. So we have this thing, okay. I think I'm, I'm probably just going to stop this process if it's not done. Okay. Uh, finish with some error. That's fine. Okay. So if you run Docker images minus A, right? So sometimes, you know, because, you know, something happens because you have so a lot of images, some images are running, uh, but they don't get complete. Or we have, a, we have a concept of layers, right? So it's basically the, the reason why uh, Docker can Docker images can be so small is because they can share what they call layers, right? So you find that you know this is a layer, this is a layer, this is a layer, uh, but then maybe you know whatever the content is in that layer has been rebuilt, and you know, now we have what's called an offend uh, image. So it, we have an image which is there, but it's no longer being used by anyone, right? Uh, that's why you can see the repository is none, tag is none. So it could be it could really be use, useless, but it was it's taking it's still taking space. In, in your in your machine. So what I like what I've done actually is I've just done this. I've uh, this command because I was using this thing a lot since nothing is running. So if I run this command, it's just saying you know run this this command grep and, and Linux is just it's just a way of picking uh, you know uh, part of a it's like a way of, it's like some regular expressions on the terminal. Pick wherever you see this none uh, word in, in the list of my repositories, and then take the, the third uh, value, which is the image ID. Right. So that's what I'm I'm doing here. I'm taking the third value, and then okay. So now here I'm just gonna list them, right? So now it only lists all the often images that I no longer need, right? But what can I do with those uh, often images? Is I can remove them. Right? So that's what this thing does. Right? So, it's, so this part, I'm going to paste it. I paste it here. So this part is exactly the same as what I have up here, right? It's this, but then what I'm, I'm doing is that I'm passing this list to this Docker RMI. Uh, this is minus, minus F means force it, right? So I, I don't care if there are any warnings, but force it. Or sometimes you may find that, you know, it will complain, say, and this often image is still being used by another container, right? So I'll just say force it, and then it will delete all of them, 
right? But maybe what we want to do now, the first thing is we can just do something much more simpler in case we need our often images again. We we'll pick one image, right? And then it will say it's been deleted, right? So now let's list our, of our images again, see if it's there, right? So 4CBD, it's no longer there, it's been removed, right? So that's how you, you know, work with creating images, deleting images, etc. Uh, but I think uh, for this, most of these things run very slow, but I think what we can do is we have this one here uh, that I want to show you. So we've been using a anaconda a lot, right? And I think in, in terms of installing anaconda, it was a pain for some of the guys. But anaconda also has a, a Docker version, right? So you could actually run anaconda without having to install a thing, right? So the way you do it is you just run this command, right? Uh, let's see first. Let's see if I, I think I've already pulled it, but let's find out. Okay, images. Let's think. Okay. Uh, okay. Now I'm in terms of the way to do it. Uh, for some reason, it keeps forgetting that I don't need to be root to do that. Okay, let's see. Okay. Uh, Because I was running Docker images. I see we're almost running out of time. Okay. But anyway, so I've already pulled it here, right? This is the Anaconda, this is the Miniconda version, right, of Anaconda, right? This is the, the, the smaller version of it. Uh, but I can run it. So I run with this command. Let's see, okay, I run with this. It's a bit uh, complicated, but I can explain some of it. <coughs> okay, so it's just saying that uh, you wanna, okay, so here I was using sudo, I don't think I need sudo. Okay, can you guys see this? Let me see if I can make it. Can I make this thing red? Uh, with red, okay, yeah. Can make it larger. Okay, I'm not able to make it larger. But I hope you can see it here. But here it's just saying, you know, as root, you know, run Docker in an excited mode. And uh, the, this is for tag, but this is the tag here, right? And then it's, this is for P, P is for port, right? Uh, as you've seen, in when you're running Docker, when you're running an Anaconda, I mean, it runs on a port. So let's see, right? It runs on a port, so, right? Uh, just look for the one for other comments. So eight something, right? So you are running on the double eight double eight port, right? So this is what they're saying. They're saying that you know, although Docker is um, Anaconda is installed within uh, within my container, I want to map the port in the container with the port uh, on my host machine, which is your like for me, you know, like the computer that I'm using, right? So it would be your computer that you're using. But you can map this to any port that you want, right? And then you'll be able to access it in this way. Right? So that's what it's doing. And then I'll say this is the user continuum, and this is the image that you want to to um to pull. And then minus v is for volume, right? So volume maps uh you know your actual physical uh, directory here. Like for me, if I want to map from here, and it maps it with you know it adds it as a volume within. Within, uh, so from set here, I've said projects, but you could say any, any folder that you want, maybe even data folder that you want uh, you and the conduct to work on. So you, you say it's a, the volume is, is what you want, and it will copy whatever is in here into um, into your, 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 your container, right? And saying, okay, you want to run bash when you get there. Um, there's another way of actually doing this, which is called an entry point, but we won't explain it now. And then, you know, so these are all the, the, the flags that you can pass, you know, et cetera, it's called Jupyter, and then you run it. Okay, so let's just test it. Okay, I'm just gonna use that, as it wants me to. Okay, you'll see it up. I'm just gonna check if the students wanna see anything here. Uh, Daisy, I'm, I'm not sure what the question is. Is this different from the Windows environment? I'm not sure if you can speak up or, or type an explanation to your question. Uh, 
Okay. Um, okay, we'll just let it run. <coughs> but um, while it's running, so that this is going to uh, open Anaconda, right? It's going to uh, open an Anaconda rules, but we'll be running it. You won't have to install anything locally because everything uh, in Miniconda has been installed in this container. Uh, let me see if I can show you a more complicated uh, Docker file. Uh, Where's my more complicated Docker file? Okay, this is it's not that complicated. I'm just installing a bunch of things. Uh, okay, yeah, maybe this one. <clears throat> okay. Um, so I've already explained, you know, you know, pulling from light uh, Alpine there, and these are these are the commands that I guess because it's Alpine, so it's a, it's a bit uh, a different what. Uh, you know how to how to run how to install things the different command uh, and you can add so basically you are adding instead of using a volume you can add folders and then from my local it would be this one and then on on, on the container it would be this one uh yeah and you could use copy as well copy and, and add work a little bit different from each other um let me see yeah, so work, work directly would be saying that, you know, for the instructions that I'm going to do next, I want to be in this directory. So you see, all of these things, what it does, what Docker will do is that if there's something that is common between this Docker file and another Docker file, it will build it in a layer and then they will be shared, right? So that's the beauty of, of Docker. You can share parts of the, of, of the operating system uh, or whatever the installations are, because you know you build up the layers and then you order that you eventually have a container, even though the end result of the containers are different, as long as the basis is the same. Uh, so basically, yeah, uh, Docker Compose takes it uh, as up as a notch, right? So let's just um, okay, Michael, I'll, I'll get back to you now. Let's just uh, explain this quickly. So. Here you've seen that I have a, now I have a bunch of switch that's up. Oh, let's just try that again. So you've seen that here I have a bunch of images, right? But you know, for example, if I'm gonna run an Miniconda, I wanna run it on top of Ubuntu, right? So there's a way to put put images uh, together so that they become one environment. And for that, they use what's called a Docker Compose. Right? There's multiple versions. So the, I think at the time I was using version two, I'm not sure if they upgraded to a different version. Um, and Docker Compose, you have to install it differently um, in addition to, uh, Compose. Okay, is it? I think it's a uh, sudo apt install Docker Compose. And my users will say yes to everything, right? So Docker Compose, you install it differently, but it's the way to make sure that different Docker files, different containers are able to work together. Like I was saying with that example, is you can have a, a database in one area, you have a, 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 an application server in a different area, you know? So you, you are able to make sure that uh, those different containers are, are able to work together, and they do that through what's called Docker Compose. Uh, yeah, I won't get, get into how it actually puts things together, like pause, depends on, etc. Uh, because we're out of time. But also I see that, that other people, I think I may also be moving too fast, that, that are asking other questions. So maybe I'll just take those questions um, and, and other questions that you guys may have. But I really want to see uh, this running. So you can see in... Uh, okay, so, so you can see an actual uh, implementation. Just one sec. Uh, so let's run um, Anaconda. And what the issue is here. Failed to create the okay, current times failed. Let's try that again. Okay, we can even now do this switch ports. Let's see if it will run this time. Mm. 
to have let that run then. Uh, okay, so Michael, I'm absolutely new to Docker. What exactly is the use of it? <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> so it's 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 useful when you're in development and also when you're more especially when you're when you're deploying, right? It is first you are de you want to uh, save space, right? Uh, you want to save computing resources. So, um, yeah, so it allows you to, to package your, 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 your deployment in a, in a very small um, file, right? And then you can, you can uh, put it on, a, you know, on AWS, wherever, on EC2, and then can run from there. So it's mostly for, 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 for that, for deployment, but also when you're developing. So, for example, if I have, uh, like I have Boink here, right? So I have my Boink that I've built, I've done everything. So if you do a Docker pull, it means you have everything that is part of, of my Boink environment. And then you can easily, so if you join a company today, instead of, you know, having to install everything like we've done with, an, with Anaconda, right? We've had to install everything, right? If we had an image, if we're using a, an Anaconda image, you didn't have to, you just pull the Anaconda image like I'm doing here. Uh, and like I'm doing here, which is not working for some reason, uh, and then you you just you know get started. So it's easy. You have one single environment for everyone because you're all working from 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 the same uh, uh, Docker uh, uh, container image, right? So that yeah. even when you sorry, it's sorry, sorry. sorry. yes, yeah. Uh, Maybe it's just because I'm new that I'm 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 completely not getting your point. But okay, yeah. uh, can you make it? For example, can you make it? Uh, um, can you make the scope a little easier? For example, okay. uh, you can make it by 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 the data set we have now. Uh, maybe on the Twitter uh, task. Maybe can yeah. you can you uh, narrow it to that one? Since you, I think you are you are making it broad. Yeah, it's a bit complicated. Okay. Yeah. So we have yeah. Okay, that's fine. So we have um. Where is it? Okay, we have our cheetah data analysis task, right? Uh. So let's say. Uh, everything, right? So everything here. Uh. Okay, we have our requirements file here. We have our requirements file where we install this, right? So right now, what are we doing, right? Everyone is is cloning the the data analysis folder, and they're also having to run pip uh, install uh, minus r uh, minus r requirements of text, right? You yes. have to you have everyone has to do that, right? But if you're using Docker, it, this would it would come pre-installed, right? All you have to do is just run the image locally, which is what I'm trying to show here, right? And for some reason it's failing. I'm, um, I'm not sure what's broken, which just something is broken. I don't know what it is. Uh, just gonna start my terminal again. I'm gonna show you now. Right. So for, for now we've, we've had to like, um, like reinstall everything, everyone. Yeah, uh, there was a, at some point there was 170 of us, right? So every one of those 170 people has to install this thing, it has to run this command or install uh, other things that we we installed. Um, what else did we install? Uh, Scikit learn, right? Install SK learn. If we're using TensorFlow, install TensorFlow, whatever, right? But if you already have a, a Docker container that you are pulling from, then those things are already done. If all of the 170 uh, uh, trainees are, are all using the same environment, right? So we don't have to debug separately because, you know, uh, we have the same environment. If there's an issue with one machine, there probably is an issue with all the other machines. But if you have, you know, different versions, like, you know, someone will have, you know, the latest pandas and not, you know, one uh, one one zero etc. then it makes it much harder. But when you have, you know, uh, a, a, a Docker container already. You don't have to do that. And and the other thing, the beauty is also this um, of that is that you have companies, right? Uh, I think there's also TensorFlow Docker image. 
you have companies like Google, right? Sharing, you see, verified publisher. They're sharing their own uh, environment. So if you, you pull this, then that's it. You can just run, no issues, right? No issue, you don't have to install anything. Everything is there uh, already installed for you. Everything is configured. You just do uh, Docker pull uh, this and, and, and you're ready to go. So even when you deploy, you know what's already there, right? Because you can also even have a Docker file. Uh, I think here, yeah, they actually have a, it's there, it's available in the GitHub repo, right? Which is one of the things that you can do. Like remember when we're doing GitHub actions, one of the things that you can also do is when you push a, a, this, the, um, this repo here, you can use, um, you know, so, sort of like a, a, a web hook where it also pushes to, to Docker, right? So you push to GitHub and it also immediately pushes to Docker. There's a way to link them, right? So what, that's one of the things that you can also use GitHub actions for. So, so yeah, I'm not sure if um, it's still complicated the way I'm explaining it, but if it's, you have the same environment, everyone, uh, the environment is small. It's, it's much smaller than when you're using a virtual machine and you can even deploy uh, easier. Right, because because you are sure that you know it, you don't have to say oh it works on my machine when you when you deploy it it no longer works right but because you'll be deploying the the, the, the Docker container right because it's 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 here on my machine right uh, thank you. okay let me just finish this I'm gonna show you the okay, I think I'll just okay. Docker images. Right. Okay. For some reason, I get to keep running this. Okay, it's fine. I'll fix it later. Something is broken. So this one, this one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can ask. Okay. So yes, exactly. Hey, now. So no longer saying you know it's working on my machine because everyone has the same machine. The, the same machine, same environment, everything. You just run it, right? So that even when it goes to production, you know exactly what's on that machine. Is you know, and with the Docker file, it's clear what's what's installed, what's you know, uh, and it's smaller, right? Because uh, and it doesn't use a, you know, with virtual machines, uh, you have to use a, a it is, you have to have a, a user interface. This you can interact with it on the on the terminal without the need for user interface, right? Because you know the, the Google also takes up resources, but also it means that you can connect to you know a, a server, you know, a, a running somewhere else uh, via you know SSH or whatever, right? Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's like a, a only related to the deployment purpose, maybe. Yeah, for de deployment, but also the whole. Uh, the whole uh, continuous integration uh, and, and microservices makes yeah. use of, of, of Docker. Mm -hmm. So if, if you're going to build microservices, if you want to do continuous integration, it, it's very hard without Docker. Thank you. Okay, I understand. Thank you. It's very hard without Docker to do a continuous integration and microservices. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very yeah. much. Okay. Yeah, I wish I could <laughs> explain it a bit better, guys. Uh, but yeah, we are still here the rest of the day. So if you have more questions, uh, and I, yeah, I wish you know, like I was saying, I wish I had a proper demo, you know, instead of uh, going through a lot of things. Okay, so now it's run. It's so slow now. Uh, so what I'm going to do? Uh, okay, I'm just gonna keep using this pseudo thing, which I don't like. But let's try it run because um, I really want to. Because we've been working with. With notebooks uh, all week, so I really want to see this working, uh, so that you guys can can see something working, uh, and then probably you could even use it, um, right? So I think this this um, image is already uh, on GitHub. Um, this company has shared it, so you can actually maybe even add your own things if there's some packages that are not there. But obviously, Miniconda is there, and everything that it comes with. Uh, it is slow for some reason. Okay. In the meantime, I will look for 
I think it's this. Okay, so cut. Okay. Yeah, okay, so this, I should be running this again. Okay, let's see. Stop that. Okay. Hey, are there no other questions, guys? That's what I was saying. Like, let's just discuss, you know, it, like I understand, many of you are, are new to Docker. Uh, I've been using it for many years, so there may be other things that I take for granted. So please ask. Right. But the idea is if you want to deploy, right? So let's say you have your Twitter analysis, uh, Twitter data analysis, uh, you know, if it's done, you've done in the notebook, put a notebook, now you've, you've, you've uh, used Streamlit uh, to, uh, to make sure that you're able to see it on a dashboard, you want to deploy that dashboard, right? The, the best way to do it is to take your code base and put it into a Docker container and then deploy it. Right on some environment, whether it's AWS, uh, and I, I'm not sure if Heroku you uses uh, if you can deploy Docker images via Heroku. Uh, but yeah, like in any other environment that can host uh, those uh, Docker images, you never have to worry about anything. You know, so you can do that definitely. Uh, I mean, if, if someone is interested, you know, to take uh, this. The solution that you have from the Twitter data analysis and deploy it using Docker. It's possible. You can do that. You can even build a uh, via Docker, like I, like I want to show you now. Um, okay, so that's fine. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, let's try this again. We've got this. Uh, okay. I think we need to start this again. Oh, let me see. <coughs> okay, let's try this again. I think we can even do it from anywhere. Oh, okay. Let's see. My computer is not allowing me to not use sudo for some reason. Funny enough, I just ran this recently. Maybe we can do it a much easier one. Okay, let's try a much more easier one. I think I can ignore some of this, but I don't. Okay. Is this install? Because no. I'm not sure exactly what's already installed in that. Uh, okay. Let's try this. Okay. Let's do this little open here. Let's do it quickly. Okay, let's see if we can do this. Easier without going through without going through sudo to run this thing. Okay, I'm check slot on some music. Okay. She told me that the group is already there. Come on. 
Yeah. This is what 8 gigs of RAM gives you, eh? Okay, let's see. Let me just check here if there's any other comments while I wait for that. Yeah, and I see also the engagement is, is, is quite low, low. Many people are not speaking, so I think, um, yeah. Someone is asking if, no, uh, Johan's uh, background is, is, is different from, from, uh, from Docker. Uh, Backgrounds also, also background. I mean, it also uses the same concept. Uh, as it, it, it's you, you need a virtual box to run a uh, background, right? It's also uh, it, it's not exactly it's not a yeah. This is a virtual box, but uh, it's not really. I wouldn't say it's really a, a virtual machine because, um, it's like it's I'd say. It's, a, it's an orchestrator as well, you know. Um, you can install things onto an environment, uh, in a local environment, uh, or whichever environment with it. And yeah, I think you can use it with Pep, uh, Chef, and Puppet, etc., which are other orchestrators that you can use. But I'm, I don't think uh, you could use uh, Vagrant with, with Docker. It's, a, it's, a, it's another different uh, way of, you know, uh, I guess segregating environments as well, but it, you need to have VirtualBox installed for it to run. So VirtualBox is another platform which uh, VMware or is based on if you're going to run uh, VMware. Okay, let's see what we have here. Okay, it already exists, but that's good. Yeah, for some reason, my computer just slowed, slowed down. So, okay. So let's skip the other one. It's already been done. Okay. So I think I need to exit first. Okay. Or maybe I need to exit once. Okay, let's see. And uh, repeater, okay. Okay, let's try it. Okay, let's get new group. That's it. Repeater. Okay. Anyway, that's failing. Let's try it with this again. It really shouldn't be that difficult. That's a very simple instruction. Okay, let's just wait for it. Are there no other questions? Anyone? Please feel free, guys. Um, yeah, like I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm not able to explain it differently. Um, and I wish I had like a, a proper example uh, to show you guys. Where we could we could uh, delve into everything. Okay, this is taking forever. But basically, what's what's going to happen here when if this succeeds, is it's going to, like, if we. Okay, so. Like, if I'm here, if I if it's like running Jupiter. Basically, it's just going to run Jupyter Notebook uh, from from the container, right? Instead of from my local environment. So, you know, it's already been installed. You know, this uh, base image contains all the pre-built uh, stuff. And here it's just, you know, uh, other things, you know, uh, volumes, what data to, which ports, you know, uh, no browser. Uh, okay, I'm not sure what that, you know, it probably doesn't, it means that do not open the browser immediately because what I have to do is like, I have to click and open the browser. So it should work, but um, I'll share some of, of, of these uh, commands that maybe you guys can try because this is, it's been much, much slower than I expected it. 
I think I don't know what what is wrong here. Uh, maybe maybe I removed an orphan image, which this container depends on. I don't know, but I, I doubt it. But it should nothing should depend on an orphan image. But they have a bunch of other, you know, uh, commands that we could we, we could run, um, you know, with with Docker. Uh, even we can even remove all the images if we want to start from scratch. Actually, maybe let's let's do that. Uh, let's remove all the images. Maybe let's see. Commission denied. Yeah, it seems something is running somewhere, uh, and I didn't kill it. So. Yeah, <clears throat> I think something is already running somewhere and I don't see it. I've, I've closed so many windows, so that's why it's not working. Yeah, uh, but yeah, you know, I'll share some of this of these commands that you guys can, can play around with. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, I'm sorry it was too high level, um, but you know, if anyone has, has a question, uh, we're still here. I'm not sure if, I don't think any of you guys have something else to do now. Anyone? Hello? Did you have any questions? Yeah, any questions? no questions yeah. from me. No questions Hello? from me. Yeah, okay. Now I'm sorry it was it was too much. Um I should have yeah, I, I did try to find a nice example. Actually Yeah, um I was looking la I think last year there was another demo uh that the the uh, different uh, group of guys did uh from uh, Ten Academy. So I'll try to share that. Maybe you know that's that's a an easier way to get into it. I'm not sure, yeah. Uh, but, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe yeah, that was thanks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did. No, I no did problem. <laughs> yeah, I did look for a, a good uh, example, which I didn't find. So, I was, and I wasn't able to build it on time. Okay, yeah, you see something is is I miss here. Um, so created. Okay, so let's see uh, if I do. I think it's PS. There's nothing running. Okay, so let's let's do this. Let's just remove everything, and then try run. Because I want, I really want you guys to see at least the anaconda one running. Uh, okay, yeah. So something is something is using um, this Docker. I don't know what it is. Uh, okay, so. Let's see. Okay. Let's try this. Remove all the often images. Yeah, yeah, something, something. I've I've closed too many windows, so something is still running, which uh let's see. Yes, is minus AX. Yeah, something is uh, as the Docker lock. Yeah, so it's using the Docker socket, it's locked it. So until that process finishes, the easiest way would be for me to restart the machine, but you know, that would, would lose the code. Uh, but yeah, it seems like something is, yeah, it's still using Docker. That's why I'm not able to, to, to run that example. But I'll, I'll share, I think, um, yeah, I'll put some of these links on uh, on Slack. There. But I mean, in, in the meantime, don't worry about it. Just implement uh, your solutions um, without Docker. Uh, with I think with Streamlit, right? If you could just do it with Streamlit or Flask, then that that would be great. You don't have to use Docker. I'm, I was just showing you what's out there as well. It, uh, Desmond, are you still there? Yes, I'm still there. Uh, do you have any any suggestions? Uh, anything to add? Uh -huh. No, I don't have any suggestions or anything to add. I think we can continue with the, with the chat in, in Slack. 
Yeah. Okay. Uh, guys, I, I is that fine? Yeah. No problem. <laughs> Okay. So, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Okay. No, thanks, guys. Um, yeah. I mean, th this recording is, is is going to be put up. So if you need to go over some things, and if maybe you need me to share some of my uh, instructions that you can play around with, I'm I'm happy to do that. Uh, but in the meantime, just you know, focus on on the current deliverables, and then you can come back to Docker later. Hi, Mister. Good afternoon. Yeah. Hello. Um, hi. Hi. Yeah, this is Oladi Miji. Hi. Sorry, I'm just asking a question. So currently, mm -hmm. I'm running um, I'm running VS Code on the virtual machine. I don't want to use my system so that it doesn't um, slow down my own my own my own system. So I'm running mm -hmm. my VS Code on on the virtual machine and um, mm -hmm. and when I try to import when I try to install the um, Jupyter extension, I get this error saying that it can't um, do this thing. It can't install. Mm -hmm. That it can't install this current version. And I want to ask, is there any way to run um, Docker on this um, on this um, on, on this virtual machine? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm going to see. Mm -hmm. yeah? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I said I'm okay. going to Kodali. Um, so maybe you see. Yeah. So, so the thing is with, with Docker, like, how would you expose your 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 thing, your 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 VS Code, right? Because remember here, the uh, not mind that. Let me see if I can come get back to the thing. Because if you remember here. Uh, we are, we are saying that ex, expose this port, right? Expose this port from, you know, map uh, whatever is, is on the Docker container with whatever is on my machine, right? So this works for web, for browsers, right? It works for browsers because, or, or, or I'd say internet traffic, right? But with VS Code, you know, because it's, it's a desktop desktop application, it's not online. You you wouldn't be able to. Does that make sense? Yes, yes, I think it does. I guess. Yeah, yeah it has to be online for you because it means that you know you are you are accessing it via an internet connection, right? Uh, yeah. I mean. Yes. Yeah. So yes, I think I when I started using yeah, the way. They was using concepts like bridges and stuff, which is, you know, how do you map, you know, your network from the from the um, from the Docker container to the network on your local machine. So that's how Docker actually works. There's bridges that are being created to map, you know, what's going on within the container because it's sort of like a self-contained, um, you know, machine. You map that to your local. So. You know, because VS Code doesn't run uh, via the network, so you won't be able to do that. But uh, I think, you know, for, for that, you'd want to use, uh, I think there's, a, you know, uh, I think Windows Remote Desktop, if you've heard of it. Um, no. No, no, I haven't. Yeah, but, yeah there, there are lots of other technologies, but with Windows, if mostly for Windows machines, we are able to, you know, log into a remote. If say someone is hosting a, a Windows machine somewhere else, if you use a remote desktop, you can probably, uh, you know, use that. Uh, let's see, it's RDP. Uh, yeah, but I'm, I'm not. I don't use Windows much, but I know there's there's something like this where you can access a, a remote Windows machine. So for something like uh, VS Code, that's probably what you would need, right? Uh, with Docker, I, I don't think so, because it's it's running on a it's a desktop application, really. It's not a network application. That's why when we do this, uh, when we do this, we expose the, this port and we're able to. So here, when I when I run this, what it will give me 
is a is a local host and it will give me like some token and then i'll be able to access it here and basically if if anyone you can even uh Personally, with, with, if you are running on a Hadoop platform, if someone is running Hadoop somewhere else, then you know you can be able to connect that Hadoop machine, run a, a command like this, and be able to access you know uh, your Jupyter notebooks. You, you run it as if it's locally, but it's accessing data from from a Hadoop cluster. So it's, well, that's one of the things that you can actually do, which is which is really amazing. So if you have, you want to work with terabytes of data. You know, you just run this, uh, you know, you SSH into that um, Hadoop machine, you run this and you, and you can get that, um, you know, you can map, uh, you know, the, wherever the cluster is to your local machine and you're able to run as if your notebook is running on the cluster. So that's one of the things that you can do. So it's a really powerful technology. Um, yeah, okay. Um, that's it, guys. Um, I think I've already exhausted <laughs> my choice of, of this thing. Um, yeah, I ran it just now, but it worked. But I don't know, it's no longer working. So I've broken something. Uh, but yeah, you know, you install Docker, right? That's all you need to do on your machine. You know, um, if you're using uh, uh, Ubuntu, you do a sudo snap uh, install Docker. If you're using Windows, there's a... Um, you know, there's a, I think you use a, yeah, this one, Docker desktop for Windows, you install it, and then they'll show you how to get it started. And then you can run this, uh, this command, and you'll be able to access Jupyter Notebooks. But that's just the start, right? And then you can go forward, deployment, etc. Yeah. Okay, guys, uh, thanks for your attention. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry I couldn't make it a, a bit easier um, and more accessible. Um, yeah, but we can we can chat with us like. <laughs>